ADA films. All right, we're bueno. back. Consistency, back to back two weeks now. Hit the Johnny. Hit the joint. We're back. Same group as last week. Reggie to my side. What up? Lon the God. You're. And D Sheet. Oh, hey. Is it recording, Rob? <laughs> we're on it. We're on it. We're here. We're here. Live All right, in so action. we can't do a recap this week because we already timed that. We're in the future. I don't know what I did this past week, but I am getting ready to leave to... Uh, oh, I left. Did I leave? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're already out I'm there. I'm in Barcelona right now. You, you might be off a good, good pack right now. So <laughs> definitely cooked. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, a common question that I do get a lot is what are my goals with the store and then the company... And have they changed since we opened? And personally, I don't think they've changed. I think they just grow in a way. Yeah, because I'm not, I I understand that because even though it's been three years, it doesn't, like, it's been like a snap. And like, as things happen, like, I think for like the store itself, like, yeah, we don't ever know like what the next thing is off rib just because of the way life is at the moment but i think it's more so um i don't know my i I, just speaking for myself like when we opened the store my goal was being able to sustain especially in this economy and the fact that we've been able to do that for three years i think that's like a big thing just for the fact of like it's not easy you know what i mean and like Mm -hmm. i know we work our butts off whatever and like we make sure that we get stuff done and everything and there's a lot of like behind the scenes stuff that people don't see to where it may not it may look super easy from the outside but um i would say like just being able to keep the doors open i think it's a it's a big goal and then just things that happen along the way you know just going through them and learning from them and finding different ways to adapt and um continue to grow in that aspect or finding different ways to be innovative and what we do because as long as we've been doing this things aren't always the same every year there's different hurdles there's different shifts and being able to learn from those and continue to figure out what the next step is as we go it's it's weird because it's kind of hard to like say like oh shit like this is where i plan to be in five years because you don't know certain things are going to happen along the way Mm -hmm. yeah how about for you and your personal yeah i think um Early on, I think my my goals evolve a little bit, but like, kind of like stay like like you said, like, they're like the same goals. They just evolve or maybe get bigger. I think early on, like I just I kind of view it as like, I just wanted to get on the court. Yeah. In a way, like I just want to be viewed as like a player on the court, and then you become a player on the court, and it's like, oh shoot, I need starting time. I need I need playing time. I want to start eventually. So um. Now I think, like, I view myself on the court, and now I'm like, you know, you work towards whatever your craft is, whatever you like doing. It's like an adaption, I would say. I think, like, you want to do something, and I always, I think I've said this to everybody that, like, wants to start a brand or something like that. Your first drop is always going to do okay at bet, okay or pretty good. Mm -hmm. But people always want to, like, believe, like, yo, are you going to be consistent? Are you going to drop again? Because... You could get the support. The first the first drop is your support drop. It's like, oh, I, fu- I fuck with him. Let me get show it. Show love. Let me show love. That doesn't really matter how it looks. I'm going to just cop it because I fuck with him as a human being mm-hmm. or them, vice versa. Your second drop, it might not do as well because now they're like, oh, who knows if he's going to keep dropping, she, whatever. It's like, you know, like, doesn't really matter. Um, But it's just like. They want to know that you're gonna be consistent because it ha- it's happened to us and it happens to some of my friends where they're like, "Yo, my first drop did pretty well," and then their second drop was a dud. But then now it's like, you always gotta come up with certain things, and like your goal is to continue creating, or even just like for us, like, what can we do for the store? Because I feel like when we opened the store, it was post shoes, night pick, and hopefully people see it. Mm. Now it's like then we went, then we evolved into the night reels. And then now we're evolving into like doing drops on Mondays and it's just like so much things. And even like the website, it's just like you always got to add on. So it's it's kind of hard to like set a goal. It's almost like you got to do like how DC said it. It's like your goal should, should be sustainability. 
you almost it's almost like a road like not really yeah. like a goal like it's just you go and you just it's hard to explain to people because like i just tell people just to start yeah. but then like you i feel you where it's like you started oh man no one supported now what but it's yeah. like keep going you yeah. know or like find something different it's difficult i mean i'm I started off with like a home decor brand and candles mm -hmm. and me and my girl did that. And then our, my goal wasn't the same. Like I wasn't messing with home decor like that. Yeah. So it trans, you know, it transfers. It's almost like you got to find a way to like rebrand every certain time without being so drastic. And I think with us, it, it's cool because it's just continuing doing what we're doing. But for us, we're kind of a, I would say like a little bit of a cheat code because we have the store. Yeah. So the hmm. store is just like you already have a market where like people are, are into the sneakers. And then for us, the brand goes hand in hand with the store where they're like, oh, I'd rather buy the Cindy tea instead of the Supreme tea in a way or vice versa. But I think now it's creating something that all the other stores around us can't do. And that's, I think, the community. So now I think like my major focus is continue growing everything that we're doing on the outside of the store and but get people to come we'll in. in yeah and even if they funnel in just to say what's up just to have a hangout area that's that's a success in it for me too where like i don't really need you to like shop where it's just like you just want to feel part of something and i think that's why like the community keeps growing because we're not like pushing a product in your face we're yeah. like yeah we have this but you don't really need it like for us i've noticed lately like people even show their support by buying a pair of socks yeah but it's just uh, like being able to be a part of something and like understanding like even though we sell a product we are also human and like we also have a life outside of this that relates to it but it's a completely separate thing like obviously like with fitness or whether we like playing video games or anything of that regard like it just shows like we have same commonalities as everybody else and we're not just a business in that sense we're like yeah, like we want to sell stuff because that's what we do, but that's not all there is to it. Yeah, no. So it's like we believe in it. It's not yeah. like we're fucking, um, how do you say, like scamming people in a way. Like we we believe we're all sneakerheads here. We're all like streetwear kids at the end of the day. Facts. Like we all like it still to this day. We're not like, oh, let me push this product because it's in right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think we, again, like we all have a certain, like we all like, we got along because me, I met you because of sneakers and you used to go to round two. Me and DC got along because we wanted to work at Riff. Right. Then Reggie started coming around because of you guys. And then we noticed like, oh shit, we hoop, you know, like, and it, there's a common ground, you know? So I feel like with Syndicate, the, it's always having like that certain common ground with somebody where like, oh, I can relate to you because of this. Or it happens all the time where like, you'll be standing here and a customer will come in and you know them. Not, so it's so always right. kind of like, mm -hmm you always have something to relate to. And I feel like with like our brand in a way, when you see somebody else wearing syndicate, you feel like you can relate to them because it's like, it's so small and tight knit where you're like, Oh, this person knows somebody in there to it's, be wearing it. It's mm -hmm. kind of like syndicate's like, it's the, it's the gateway that, um, you know, sneakers and everything is a common ground. But once you make that connection and you just build upon it, like, like you said, like you found out, Reggie, they were hanging out with me and Hudson, and you guys got close because hoops and everything. And shit, me and Lon met through hats, hat, through so hats. not on some yeah. other, but like that's it's still adjacent yeah. to sneakers. Like we yeah. were just at a hat store, so it's just all like everything's intertwined one way or another, and it's the genuine part about it is like no one's putting up a front or an image nah. because you know sneakers are cool right now. I have a sneaker store, so I have to make it seem like I like sneakers mm -hmm. to keep everything open. It's all genuine. It's all how you feel. It's all what you've liked, what you've been liking for years. So that's why people, you know, get along and blend in so well because it's all genuine. I think it's an easy way to break the ice because sometimes we run into people or things and we may not think that we have, like, similarities or things that we, like, are all into. But it, it's a way, like you guys said, to build on, like, it's the familiarity. Like, oh, okay, I know he's into something that I'm into. Yeah. So maybe we have other common interests. And it's just something that makes it a little bit easier to, like, get to know other people. Like, because sometimes you just walk by somebody and don't think nothing of it. But then you see them have a certain thing on. And even though it's a material item, it lets you know, like, oh, shit. We know, we know what that is. Yeah. So 
maybe yeah. we know more of the same things than we thought we did. Yeah, it happens all the time where like yeah. it, like a little compliment goes a long way. If I like let's see you walking around, I'm like, oh, Supreme Shocks, White Cement Threes, these um, Kith Marbles. If I don't know you, I'm gonna just be like, oh, nice shoes, man. Yeah, and that might go a long way mm-hmm. more than just like being like, damn, or walking by. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like. But if you compliment somebody on something, you're like, oh, shit, because it, it sparks up a conversation. Today, I was loading up all the shoes, and this guy probably doesn't know who I am or anything, but he was just like, oh, shit, man, you got sneakers right there. That's a ton of heat. And I was just <laughs> like, oh, yeah, man. And same thing. It didn't go anywhere, but I could have probably been like, oh, I have a store if you need anything, blah, blah, blah. But it, but that's where I messed up, where I was just like, I could have just told him, like, oh, if you need anything, hit me up. But I was just kind of like in a hurry where I was just like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> It happens all the time. But, yeah, it, it's hard to say because, like, I mean, I think we all can relate to it. It's, like, we all kind of, like, live in that moment where it's hard to plan for the future, especially in, like, an industry that's, like, ours. Shaky. It's always sh- it's, o- it's shaky and it's always changing. Yeah. Like, we notice it with sneakers. We notice it with certain brands. Like, they come and go, but it's just being consistent to it and kind of, like, not over-investing into that, too. Because I think that's where a lot of people mess up. They'll, in- like, for example, the dunk market. The dunk market, people over invested into it and it crashed bad. And it happens now to this day where people are kind of scared to like lose. Like one of the biggest examples personally that I've noticed is triple pink dunks, those ones over there. Oh yeah, the there used to be two fifty, three hundred. Now they're not really worth anything. And people don't want to lose that they still have them high up and you there's a reason why you still have them, you know. Just let them go, get some of the money back and invest it somewhere else. It mm-hmm. happens to us too all the time with like certain certain stuff where i'll just be like oh fuck fire sell it just to get some money back on it yeah it's the attachment to the things where it's like yeah we like it but it doesn't mean that we're like live or die by it in that sense like like it's okay to let go of things and put it into something else because that's all everything is it's a cycle like everything comes and goes and everything has this moment and it's like you know the way everything is now with the way things release too it's like nothing is guaranteed to stay around or be something that people want forever. So you have to be able to understand that with, with all that too, when it comes to at least the business side of it, because like, yeah, you could like something your whole life, but in this economy and in this world that we're in with sneakers, like these are cool today, tomorrow they may not be. So like, why am I going to cherish and value it to the point where it's like, damn, like I could probably make a little bit less money on it and then, invested into something else if i've had it for a bit yeah like and yeah. then going back to the next question somebody was where do you see yourself in five years yeah and that one's really hard because it's literally i don't <laughs> know what i'm gonna years. do next month you know like five <laughs> years but one thing i kn- i have noticed why people invest into like let's say smaller brands like us is that they're investing into the person mm-hmm. they're investing yep. they're like when they buy a syndicate hat they're like yo dc bris matt when they invest in your stuff, they're like, Reggie, like, and I think it's hard to say, like, let's say in five years, I want to be like, oh, I don't want to be in the store no more. I, I want to train somebody mm-hmm. to be like, it's exactly like what Sean did with me, where like, now you would come see Briss mm-hmm. around too. But it's so hard because people want to come in and see us here. Like when they see, let's say Zay and somebody else, Julian, they're going to be like, yeah, we kind of know them, but I re- still, I come here because of this, you know? But, it'll be good to have like somebody like a Zay start learning how to buy, start learning how to do things just so he could be, we could trust him and be like, all right, cool. I can take three days off without forcing DC Mm -hmm. to be here on his days off. But again, when you're so hands on that trust is so hard and it's not even the trust. It's just like the little things where like, are they going to greet everybody? Are they not going to be on their phone? Are they not going to be, talking dumb shit you know like yeah it's yeah. it's so hard because it's so personal now you're not really working for a corporation where like you can lack and it's easy it's they're, it's, they're representing yeah. you yeah yeah they're representing you yeah. or it's like you care like obviously you care what you put out there but yeah. now some other dude is going to be standing in this room still portraying like yeah what yeah. people think is bris you know yeah. in a way so i feel that L- luckily we don't have that issue but i know like it could be just like a small a small a small hiccup in an industry that it's like i would say this industry is so forgetful mm-hmm. like you fuck up they're on to the next one you slow down they're on to the next store because there's obviously a, bunch, a ton of stores mm-hmm. that are doing it we close for a week we'll lose a lot of traction because they're gonna be like oh fuck we need cindy you know because yeah. it's like 
you never know how you help people. Like, I always think about that. Like, people come in here and they're, like, telling me, like, a crazy sob story or something. And I'm like, look, bro, it doesn't really matter. Like, I feel for yeah. you. I'm still going to buy your shoes. But and but I'm also very happy to help you out in that situation, you know? But, like, it, you never know because you get people out of tight situations, yeah. you know? Yeah, sometimes they tell you, sometimes they don't. And, like, it's none of our business regardless. But it's the chain effect of that we don't know we have sometimes where... Um, we make it comfortable for people to feel like, okay, I could go in there and like, hopefully it's something that I could take and we can make their life easier in whatever situation they got going on. You know yeah, what I mean? And, and I think another thing that helps us in here is that we're not like gossipers. Yeah. Like people always ask us like, Oh, like, what do you think of this? And I'm just like, ah, it's whatever. It's like somebody's beefing, like how the streetwear beef. People always ask us <laughs> about streetwear. They're like, you, you guys have streetwear <laughs> beef? I'm like, bro, no, no. <laughs> like not that I know of, you know, yeah. but, <laughs> we don't get into it like if somebody comes in and tells us like this whole like blah 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 about somebody we'll be like oh bad sick but we'll hear you out as a person but we're not going to repeat it to somebody else like we're but, just going to be like uh whatever know. so you know and same thing with people coming and telling us their stories about like why they're selling it blah yeah. blah blah it's like bro we we're we're not going to judge you we don't care no. like some people are so i, I don't want to say fragile because it's kind of rude but it's like they care about the image so much that it's just like, bro, like it happens to me where I need bread. But guess what? I could go into my closet, grab it, boom, pay this little debt mm -hmm. off. We literally don't care. Like we'll help you out regardless. Yeah. At the end of the day, like uh, we, I don't think we judge people based on their stuff. Like at the, it's material shit, bro. Like who cares? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we sell it, but it doesn't mean that that's who we are. Like it's just what we do. You know what I mean? And never feel like, oh, damn this person ha has to get rid of this so like they can't do certain things like no nah, yeah it's just like it, it don't it, matter it does it doesn't matter like yeah. oh damn this person sold this fuck they must be doing bad i don't i never really think about that you know like i yeah. just spy your shoes <laughs> listen to you talk to you and keep, keep it pushing. keep it pushing oh uh, no, yeah that's the thing where bro like five years from now Honestly, I don't know, because even five years ago, I wouldn't have thought that I would have been right here. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? So five, year, well, was five years ago, 2018, I was locked into round two. Yeah, I, yeah. There, there, was well. a point, there was a point where I was at round two, and I was like, I'm a lifer. You yeah. know, I'm going to be here till like, the company sells. And it was me and Luke, and mainly Luke, we would yeah. have those talks where they would be like, yo, if we sell, like, we're going to take care of you, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And obviously, with the company growing, I grew, yeah. and they did take care of me. But again, in 2019, I was like, oh, I'm going to be here till they sell. I'm going to be here. I'm going to get a fucking CFO position or I'm going to get this mm -hmm. type of position. Yeah. You know, like I'm going to keep going. But obviously yeah. it didn't happen. But yeah, it's, it's hard to say because in five years, who knows what we might be, be five doing. Five years ago, we didn't have the pandemic. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. There's so much mm -hmm. stuff that could happen in five years that it's kind of hard to gauge it. Like even like you said earlier, like even a month from now, like it's hard to call it because sometimes things throw you curveballs. But I, I do like to set, like, little mini goals, like, where, okay, like, by the end of this year, I want to have this done. Or, like, by the end yeah. of next year, I want to be in this position. Like, things like that where I think they're more realistic and not saying that you can't think of something five years ahead of time. But I think sometimes it's easier and even for yourself to just, like, think of something that is actually attainable because that will give you the confidence to achieve the next thing and, it's just the little things to let yourself know, like, hey, I was able to do this. If I put my mind to this next thing, I'll be able to do that also. Yeah. It's like the same thing with like working out. I think yeah. I took that. I, I took that into my, like the business side. Mm -hmm. For example, when I lift, like, let's just start very small. Yeah. I put a, a plate on each side. Yeah. I'm not gonna put another plate. I'm gonna put a five. And exactly. some people might look at that weird and be like, why are you only getting a five? And I'm like, bro, the five is gonna help me rep it out. And then the next week, ten. So I always do that. And here. For the shirts, I'm like, oh, I did 150 this this time. Let me try 180. Let's see what happens. Let me try 200. So I think I take little baby steps like that where it's not, oh, let me invest 500 hats or 500. I did with the museum, and we're all, literally yeah. almost out. Yeah. But that was, again, I think that's one of, like, maybe our best item. But with shirts, I always up it. Or sometimes I even go down a little. Oh, the last time we didn't get through these so fast. Let me go down to 140, 130. So it's always just like playing around with it, but then as it grows, you want to. I want to grow a little bit better, not over the moon, but it's like, oh, let me add ten more tees, let me add fifteen more tees. 
Yeah, I feel like it's easier to get better or like track progress if you do like little smaller goals, like how you're saying, because like stuff could change, bro. Like, and like little smaller goals allows you to be consistent too. And yeah. like, you might not, your goal five years ago isn't gonna be what your goal is, you know? <laughs> That's why you need to have little small ones because you can just have this big goal. People are gonna get lost all in the mix, like, yeah. assuming, you know, they're still in love with that idea. Yeah, because then, or you could set a big goal, and as as long as you get somewhere, break it down, close to it. break close them down to, it, to small be, goals, yeah. maybe. But shit. yeah, small goals are good. I think I took that same way I work out, yeah. where I'm like, all right, Cole, I want to hit this, where it's realistic. Um, for for example, two months ago, I said I wanted to run a 5:30, which <laughs> fucking hard. <laughs> but I hit 5:55, and I was like, all right, Cole, I hit in the fives, you know, like. I wasn't, I wasn't satisfied, but I did cut down 30 seconds off my mile where I was just like, fuck, like that should hurt. But, you know, I got in the fives, but it's setting like little goals like that. And same, and same thing with like the store. It's like, you can't overshoot because if you overshoot it, you might hit somewhere where you want, but your, your men, how do you say your brain might tell you like, damn, you failed because you didn't get there. And you're going to make yourself believe that you failed, even though you didn't, but your mind's going to beat you up. I remember one time somebody in New York told me, like, and it's pretty basic. It was just like, yo, like, the brain is very powerful. It'll make you believe something that's not there, but it'll make you believe it, and you're going to have, like, sleepless nights over that thought. That's just a thought. It's not nothing real. It's just literally your brain telling you you failed. Yeah. But It's hard. Trust (laughs) me. It's hard, bro. Like, there'll be times where we're, like, there'll be a drop, and I'll just be like, fuck, like, that shouldn't do as well as I thought. I thought this was the greatest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next week is some random shit. Bro, sold out. the fucking pink hat. Uh, the the uh, pink camel hat. Yeah, that shit, that shit looked fire, though. Uh, it was going to be a scrap. <laughs> I didn't like the, anything about that hat, personally. Like, I yeah, didn't, yeah, yeah. I, I was just like, ah, oh, the, the logo's good, but I don't know if the baby blue hits good with the pink. <sighs> and I was so, again, it was I was so in my head where I was just like, there's something about it that I hate, but there's something about it that I like. I was like, uh, let me go to Instagram. Literally just posted it. This might be your best hat ever. This, and I was just like, bro. Your I was just like, bro, what the fuck? Like, oh, uh, yeah, and then last one sold funny. yesterday. Yeah, literally, yeah. we're we're out of those. But it, it's just hard because again, what you like might some somebody else might not like. But I was just so like, I don't think these two three colors go well together. But I was in my head, and then I was just like, you know what? Let me see if I could get a second opinion, and it worked out. Yeah, sometimes that's another thing, too, where we'll be in our head so much about something, but we get perspective from somebody else that may not think the same way we do, and it completely changes your outlook on things because sometimes we forget that we have our own way of thinking, and everybody else does, too. So the way I see mm-hmm. something might not be the same way you see something, and even just being able to have those types of conversations with people, it, it helps in a lot of situations because um, we're, we're human and we're not perfect, you know what I mean? So the fact that, like, you're able to speak to other people and let them know, like, hey, like, I see this this way, and they might tell you, oh, well, have you tried checking it out this way? Or, like, have you tried thinking about it in this manner? Like, sometimes it'll completely switch yeah. your whole mind, to it, and it's, it's a trip. Yeah, I feel like yeah. our world is so hands-on. Yeah. Like everybody's just like on it. Like <laughs> it they, they don't see it. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure you're working your ass off. You're working your ass off. Even you're working your ass off. <laughs> 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 but like people don't see these things. Like yeah. Rob, Rob does it all the time too, where like you're working so hard, but they just see the finished product that they're like, it happened to me like a couple nights ago. I fell asleep early and everybody was just like oh where'd you go last night you went out and i was just like i fucking knocked out bro like <laughs> i was fucking cooked like ralphie asked me he's just like yo what you do last night and i was like got home and i passed out bro i was tired it's been a rough week but they don't see that like everything i'm doing is for one goal which is cindy mm-hmm. yeah and i think people forget that because they probably just see us on our phone. They're like, oh, this motherfucker's always on his phone. But in reality, you're fucking going back and forth with production, going, doing this. And it's just mm. like, in a way, we're lucky because, yeah, that is my job. You know, I'm lucky that I could do everything on my phone. Yeah, you yeah. don't have physical labor to worry about. Yeah, but some people don't see that and they don't get it. Like, I'm again, like, going back to when I got the job at Riff, I, I was going to supposed to go through the police academy 
And my mom was just like, you dropped your fucking career for shoes. For shoes. She didn't understand it. And I'm pretty sure now she's probably still thinking, like, what the fuck do you do? You know, like, <laughs> like in a way she does, you know, because they, they they for sure think that, like, yo, like you literally just. Yeah, the understanding isn't there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not there where they're just like, how yeah. and why? But it's just like, bro, just kind of leave me alone, you know? Like, I got it. Yeah, I'll take care of it. But I'm pretty sure, what was that, 2012? Yeah. 2012, if you told me 12 years from now, you'll have a semi, like, pretty successful cool store i probably would have been Semi. like nah i doubt it you know I'll, i i want to be at riff for the rest Ever. of my life because yeah. riff was riff was cool i like being here mm-hmm. same thing with round two when i started round two i probably would have told you oh, i'm gonna be here for a while but it but shit changes no oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah that's the thing like sometimes um we go through i don't know i, I think it's like little eras where it's like we have this stint in a t- in a time and it's fun when when it's there but we notice i mean i notice it with everything where it, it lasts for this amount of time and then it's on to the next and it's cool because it's like that core memory and like it's part of what makes you who you are today but yeah it's kind of hard to call it like just going back to like how this topic started like five years from now I don't yeah. know, bro. It's hard to say. Like, you started with yeah. candles and stuff yeah. like that. When did you were like, oh, I got to go into this world? Yeah. Like, Yeah, and it's so, I was talking with my girl the other day. I'm like, man, I wish we just jumped straight into clothes. Yeah. But then I was, I literally, like, right as that came out of my mouth, I was like, nah, I'm like, I probably had to go through that, learn how to build a website, learn how to, like, literally just learn. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I just started realizing I wasn't in love with the idea of, like, home decor. It was just because we purchased a home. So yeah. it was like, you know, you but it was up. Yeah. 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 But when we had to decorate and then we took advantage of like that idea and people, I mean, we still have it and we still run with it. But, um, but yeah, now I just kind of want to focus on the clothes. But that's just, I think, a testimony to like being able to adapt maybe or like, let's be real, like no one's purchasing homes. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are struggling right now. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people are looking for home decor. Like yeah. people are trying to live, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was kind of, um, how I started it. And did you notice like a quick shift or it was, it took a little bit like from your like, all right, let me do clothes to this. Cause I think for us, we're, I'm excited and nervous to see like, for example, we're going to do like double knees and like a jacket, yeah, so which is going to mm, be like a little step. It's yeah. going to be a step, but it's also like the price goes up a little bit cause mm-hmm. it's cut and sew. There's more detail to it. It's like, we're going from hats and tees to like cut something a little sew. nicer. Yeah. So to me, I'm like nervous about that, like little switch. Yeah, no, for sure. Because a lot of the candles, let's say a candle and the ashtray, like the price points lower. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of the risk, sort of say, like when you're starting a business, like yeah. it's not really there as much opposed to maybe ordering 100 shirts or crew necks or double logo, you know, like all that stuff kind of yeah. adds on. And it's like, damn, this is just one drop. One drop used to be three drops yeah. over here. But, like, over time, you don't even see your growth. Mm-hmm. It's just that's your next step for syndicate. Because, you know, shirts are selling, hats are selling. It's like, yeah. all right, what's next? No, yeah, like, the other, there was, what was it? At the end of last month, we got hit hard with all the bi- all the merch <laughs> bills. Literally, all the merch bills mm-hmm. came at once. All the invoices. <laughs> You're like, what the? Fuck? And then we're like, yo, where'd all the money go? And it, it's all in merch. Literally like so much money in merch but the merch still hasn't arrived where like this had just arrived so mm-hmm. we're like all right cool we're gonna get it's gonna drop this week probably um and then it, we're getting it as it goes and i'm just like fuck but it, with shoes at least we see it in the night pick we're like yeah. all right that's there where the money go. went there it is it's it's on the floor but with merch it's like a lot of these places and again like some of them give me the option to do take the merch sell it and all that stuff but i I hate owing people money even if it's a giant like corporation that does that i'm just like bro i'm just gonna pay you up front Mm -hmm. like i can't do that like and they're like oh you should do pre-order and i'm just like bro pre-orders like to me it sucks you know like i hate i i see it a lot of people that do pre-orders like big people um in the comments are like yo where's my shit yo where's my stuff i hate that bro like it happens so much where i'm just like uh i rather three days you'll get your thing if if you order on the weekday you know yeah the whole like having to wait for something you paid for like it sucks as a consumer like and being able to 
have it readily available it's just like that instant gratification that people look for and like i think since we like having stuff like that we want to pass that on to our consumers as well yeah that's how everybody complaining with fucking kids yeah (laughs) everybody's complaining but yeah um that is something people don't see though like the up and down of money oh for sure yeah like of like oh damn okay we we our store's probably popping and you you yeah you know three drops are lined up and it's like for sure or like all over. They, they just you, see the finished product yeah they but the just money's see that. there though it's just yeah. somewhere like, it's, it's up in the air yeah. <laughs> it's yeah it's like no or even just like this week could be good but the next week it's like pay, it's a rent week so like right. yeah. it, it's a yeah. completely different shift and like not knowing like okay well there's it was consistent for two weeks on how everything was going and then boom like everybody got hit with a bunch of stuff so it yeah. affects us in that way too. Yeah, and people don't see that. I feel like people yeah. like with me, the people are always like, "Oh, you're mad moody," and <laughs> but it's just like, bro, like I'm moody the last week of the month and then the first week of the month, and yeah. I was just like, one, the employees got to get paid, the bills got to get paid. Yeah, like there's so much shit that's the, like it's going in and out, and then I'm just like, then I gotta get paid. He has to get paid. Matt has to get paid, and the they don't see sometimes the miracles that we're fucking doing to get everything done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just like, bro, like, and then on to the next month to do it all over again, and yeah. then the next <laughs> month, it's insane, bro. It's yeah. but, and then like you do a successful drop, and some people think like, oh, there's the end, and I'm like, bro, nope, I gotta start thinking of what's gonna next. be the next drop, and yeah. start getting into like again. Then I have to go into my head, then hit up skinny, and I'm like, hey, bro, how can we do this? <laughs> what do we need to do? Like, like, can we do this? So it's all these things that people don't see, but they're they're just gonna hit you with again the in, the end product, and they're like, "Damn, this was always moody. Like he's always <laughs> mad." But it's just like yeah. you don't really see what I'm You're doing. You're not seeing the behind the scenes, Rob. What, what did I tell you before we said that? Rob spent like 40 minutes doing this. I'm like, man, Rob, this is the stuff yeah. they don't see. No, literally, they, they just don't. see the YouTube video. Homie was here an hour, you know, like. Yeah, I don't see the editing. No, yeah, like, <laughs> where's the reels at? Where's the YouTube video? Yeah. <laughs> bro, that shit happened. Same, same thing. Like, I feel like the reason we stopped the pod is because I was like, bro, like, we got like a little bland, where we're like, all right, cool, we gotta like, actually, like, we, fr- a pod for us was free ball. Like me sending you guys all the questions, like yeah. that. That was me just yeah. asking, First school. asking customers, fucking hit, seeing what we haven't talked about because I was looking at them, and again, people don't see that. I go back and look at them, huh. and I'm just like. It was the same podcast again, just with a different shoe. Yeah. So I was just like, we always have to switch it up in a way where like we actually have to do a little bit of groundwork. We actually have to like prep a little bit. And I think it'll be a more successful pod than just being like, all right, we're here on Monday. Let's uh let's just start talking DC, about we'll just whatever. start looking and we'll be like, how was your weekend? Yeah. So now that we're kind of like ad- adding questions, and even right now I have like so many questions that I still have to go through, add it into a list. Yeah. And see what happens with, but with sneakers, it's so hard too because there's so much shit coming out right now. Oh. Um, a, another question that I get a lot is, um, what's the most money you guys have spent on shoes? Ooh, on a single shoe? Just one, one purchase. Oh, like I got a bad one. Yo. Either in trade oh. or like, like what put out? Like what was the most you put out? Trade seven thousand. I was there for that one. Yeah. For what? Uh, the denim SB, uh, the Reese Forbes, brand new. What'd you trade? His $7, life. thousand dollars worth of product. His Damn. life, bro. Huh? Oh yeah, it was a bunch of random shit. Like there was like a like probably the best item in there Soul was Flight? a Soulfly one. Yeah. When they used, when they were bussing. Yeah, those. Um, it was when I lived in New York, so I had like Supreme TNFs, like shit like that, uh, random off white shit, like stuff like that. But it was seven thousand worth of product for one shoe. Worth it. Yeah, yeah, I made you a little bit of right? money on the shoe and I sold it and it helped fund this. So oh, yeah, okay. it was worth it. Yeah, for sure. You? Uh, trade at round two. It was back when the pandemic was going around, and um, David was there. It was a pair of Travis One Mocha Highs for two K. And this is back when I was working at Foot Locker, so I had doubles of everything that came out that year. So I had double Lightnings, double. Uh, uh, patent leather one, so I just took all that shit over there. Um, my cash purchase though was probably I spent eighteen hundred on fragments, reverse fragments. So, okay. About you? Yeah, I would around fifteen to sixteen hundred for two pairs of uh, 
human races. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> fuck, bro. Yeah. <laughs> this was like 2015, 2016. Like, I had the photos, still had like the yellow, and I needed the orange and the red. Yeah. And I'm like holding them like this, <laughs> like flexed up with, with like three of the OG colorways. But um, uh, I sold the yellow. I still have the red, which I should have sold. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> like, should've. yeah. Should've so, could, like, bro. I, I I hate thinking about that shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna send that flexed up one yeah. of like my yeah. human races. Like that's like three K probably. Uh, me, fuck. Mm. Not shoe wise, fuck. I don't know what the dunks. About ten K. No, I think it's like twenty five. Fuck. Probably bad. I think you pay less for the Deftones. Huh? You pay less for the Deftones. Deftones, I traded a fucking Supreme Damn. thing. That's tough. I <laughs> think in one, it's hard because I think when I bought the the Freddies, the, no the what was it the Nirvana heart shape box and the and the what the dunk from Pete, I put out five k. So that one hurt because I put out five k. Yeah, in one sitting, yeah. so he sold me the what the dunk uh -huh. and the, the oh, Nirvana it was a package, deal. It was a package deal. Oh damn! And I remember he was just like, "Yo, sell it to you for five k," and I was oh. just like, "Fuck All it, right. all right, I'll yeah. do it." But I think if it's not like streetwear or sneakers, is when I bought those stupid cost toys. Mm. Oh yeah, the was, Dior. Wait, I came up, yeah. so yeah. I got access to the Dior plushes, and I think it was fifteen k. Yeah, fifteen k for two plushes. Yeah. Um, so I put it on my Amex. I was like, fuck this shit. Put it on my Amex. And then, then, then the next day, Justin Pregler, which was big in the cause world, for like yeah. selling and buying, he got me an offer for 28K. Literally like next day. Like next day. Yeah. I, I took him to FedEx right away. Overnighted him. Overnighted him at everything. And I shot Pregler like $1,500 for the, for the lob. Mm. But yeah, I think I like one of the quickest profits that I've ever made. Where I literally shouldn't have taken him home. I should have left him there <laughs> in downtown because we used to live in the Bronx. Yeah. So I took him from Soho to the Bronx. These big ass shits, and then I had to bring him back downtown to ship them. <laughs> yeah, and they were in like those like plexiglass fucking yeah. cases. Yeah, they oh, broke. In, they yeah. broke in transit. Oh, fuck. Um, the guy was cool about it though. But yeah, I remember I even told him like, "Yo, bro, this is like real glass. Yeah, like it might break." And he was just like, oh, as long as the toy doesn't get damaged, it's fine. And I was like, all right, bet. I wonder if he still has them. <laughs> Probably does. And they're, <laughs> fuck, bro. <laughs> like, uh, n now that you, you brought it up and then that purchase, what is the the craziest, like, pickup you've done that just went to shit? Like, for example, Human Races went yeah, to shit. Yeah, for like, sure. And I even uh, had, like, like, those were, like, the higher price, but I went out of my way and got, like, the next the yeah. next release and shit. Crazy. What is, like, yeah, what's one purchase that just, like, completely, like, Ta tanked or went to shit or like you're like damn i can't believe i bought that that was crazy i don't think it's on it's not on shoes because i think for the most part shoes i'm pretty good at just offing it like pretty fast like or like having my phone within an r.i. piece like whatever it's always on clothes yeah because like especially when you used to buy more designer shit because that shit literally yeah, worthless true. after Plummets. you buy a type of shit like it doesn't hold its value so maybe like a pair of designer shoes then but even then like i was never big on them so. but i feel like with the designer shoes we got rid of them yeah at, same at its thing. Peak. it was always like it was always we fast. wear them flex them a little bit and then yeah. somebody wanted them and gone yeah it's got to be clothes i probably like some denim i spent like 2k on some shit like that and it's probably worth a couple hundred bucks if that now yeah like something like that yeah you it's not it's not super crazy but i have bought some some DS white cement fours from here for like 500 bucks. When I came to sell them, I got offered 250. <laughs> you used them. I wore them once. You still 50% off. Oh, and I want to take back my uh, my biggest purchase thing. It was um it was Hudson's Tiffany Dunks. I came and traded oh, yeah. 3K worth of shit. 2K. I, two, 2K. Well, yeah, you guys hooked yeah. it up, but I lost my Mocha ones. I lost my Supreme Varsity jacket. I was geeked over and some denim. I wish I had all that shit back now, but. Yeah, I think that was the biggest, like, <laughs> dip that I had. Nothing crazy. What about you? But we're the human races. I'm just laughing because <laughs> I'm looking in your eyes and you're kind of, like, re reliving through, like, the memories. Bro, that shit happened. We're going to start a GoFundMe the, for launch. The, the, like the best ago. reaction was Rob's with the Royal Ones. Royal <laughs> Ones used to bust, like, $600. <laughs> 
Six hundred dollars easy. So he's here, and you know, it was current. It was like two, three months ago, but the royal ones are like three fifty, four hundred tops. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was for like one fifty, and he was just like, "Fuck, I paid six hundred dollars for these," and I was like, "Where?" <laughs> and he's like, "Here," and I was, I was like, "Oh shit." <laughs> That's like the best story because like it was part of the whole like the economy going down because I said it like I think everybody in here we all pay like six hundred dollars for Union Dunks, oh, the yeah. pistachios and all that stuff. So I remember I paid six hundred for my pair and I got like two hundred dollars for it. So yeah, that was a shoe that that went to shit, and within like four or five months. Bro, the worst one. I still think the worst one, and I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was the Union Twos. Oh my oh. god. I sold my mm. used pair like two weeks, three weeks early for yeah. five fifty. Yeah. I know who bought it. I know the homie from Foot Locker. Shout out Caleb. Yeah, bro. I, <laughs> and then now those shits I like again, it's just like waiting for the shoes. Like I'm just like, bro, like brand new hundred dollars. Like, yeah, they're a hundred bucks now. And same thing, Damn. that's I think that's when sneakers started going down. Cause I paid personally seven hundred dollars for that shoe. That's wild. A little early. A little early, just you know, cause it was still when like Buying early shoes was still was cool. So cool. Yeah. Like now nobody cares about buying early shoes. But like it was still cool. And I, I bought them. I wore them once. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. I don't know what to put them at. I, put, I think I put them at 550. Oh, fuck. Tom Sachs. Pair, right? No, it was the, 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 the Rattan. The GPS. We sold one early for like 800 or something yeah. like that. That shit was nasty. But and, they still sell. And Bro, they, even <laughs> the fucking Jumpman Jack for 2200 that was crazy. Oh, you got, yeah, yeah that we was did sell that. Bro, and when we were going, we we didn't want to sell that shoe. Like, we, we would tell people, like, yo, <laughs> just wait. We would tell everybody, like, yo, bro, like, we just bought it for eye candy. Damn. Like, we just bought it to have. And they're like, oh, like, you sure? Blah, blah, blah. I just really want them. And then we kept going back and forth with the guy and telling him, like, yo, bro, you shouldn't. I was just like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, uh, shout out to the guy that bought it, though, because he didn't care. No, he like, knew. Yeah, he literally yeah, told yeah, us, like, yeah. oh, I don't care if they go down. I just yeah. want them. Yeah, like, all right, but. You're looking out for them in a way, basically. We, I think we do. I think I think we do with everybody. Like we literally, a customer comes in for something early, and we're like, "Bro, just wait. Literally, just wait." Um, Elaine from Sneaky League, um, she wanted the birdie bad. She like, she was literally like, "Yo, I'm gonna come trade for it." Blah blah blah, and we would tell her like, "No, (laughs) like, don't buy it." The person that bought it, it bought it it with Sweetie. So, but she has the bread for it. You know, that's fucking. That's seventy bucks for her, probably. (laughs) (laughs) But. But still, like, we we literally tell people, like, yo, don't buy it. We tell you all the time, don't fucking buy Facts. something. I'm hard-headed, bro. I, <laughs> but it's crazy because I'll need it so bad and that shit will sit No, you don't, bro. Closet. No, you don't. It'll sit You're in my the only person months? that takes a lunch break and loses money. <laughs> <laughs> I fly down there. But like, I, it's like I need it in my possession no, and I don't. won't even wear it. And it's just like, all right, I'll see something else here. You got to You got to get over that hump. That's a big hump. I'm not going to lie to you because I'm still going through it, but not as bad as you. Like, we're like, now I could just look at it and I'm like sick. Like, you know what's what's crazy? I don't even want those off-white fives anymore. I know you don't. I kept telling you, don't buy those. I got them twice. Like, how recent, though? Like, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. I was going to wear them today. Two weeks, you You should see our messages for that shoe. You don't need it. Don't buy it. Wait for the next one. There's a better condition one coming soon. Like, blah, blah, blah. I kept telling him, don't buy the fucking shoe. He even pressed for it in the chat. Like, yo, take this offline. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But... That's just, uh, I think it's just a shoe. Like, it's just, and then I don't when like it, darker you're shoes. gonna sell it, and then when it comes again and again, you're gonna buy it again. No, I yes, think, you are, bro. I have a thing where if I get the same suit twice and I don't want it, like if I get rid of it because I have to, then fine. But if I don't want it, it's like two times, all right, I'm good. So now I can just use this to get something that's you're not, bro. You're never gonna learn. You gotta learn. I don't, but I was gonna worry today, bro. I changed my outfit four times. Because I don't like the, I didn't like the way. See, at least shoot, with but. you, you don't have a problem like him and Hudson. Like, nah, you, they be spending bro. big, bro. Well, I'm not gonna lie. Like, what stopped it was like, like moving in with my girl and getting like real life bills and type shit. Like, you know, I mean, but, he does like, that too. But like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, the first year I was like buying hot hats and like sneakers, but like now, yeah, no, definitely, I'm more disciplined, bro. Because I've seen so many of my shoes that like, I'm like traumatized, bro, for buying four hundred dollars resale shoes and then having to sell them for a hundred. Yeah. No, but you, the shoes that you bought. Those were stupid. Yeah, the human, the human race were popping. You know who I actually? I actually had the Bape Ultra Boost too that I Fine. regret buying. <laughs> those, are, those are cooked too. Like <laughs> just like NMD here oh, and like. Bro, the NMD. I was a Boost boy for sure. The NMD with that the red wave? and blue pod. How much was yeah. it? Like seven hundred. Yeah, I had those. The OG, po- bro. Yeah. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> you were a true hype though. Bro. Yeah. You yeah, back then because who wasn't though? Like, bro. I the NMD Boost. Yeah, Boost brought a whole. And it was comfy. 
I was but, never a boost. Pro. I never liked them. Bro, shit. Everybody, everybody did. did. Everybody did. I remember man. DC put like seven hundred dollars, and I hooked him up at that too before it he worked around. It was the orange and the blue ones. He came in, and I was just like, uh, seven hundred for each, and he was like, okay. It started with the like prime <laughs> boost. <laughs> yeah, that was real. <laughs> Bro, so yeah, he came in from Texas. He was visiting, yeah. and he just came to shop. And I told him, like, he brought like a backpack, I think, like something was, to trade, like a yeah, Supreme backpack. Something stupid, yeah. And he was Dude. just like, oh, "I want both of those." And I, I think they were at eight fifty nine hundred yeah. or something like that. And I was like, "Uh, seven each?" Question mark. <laughs> and he was just like, "Can I use this as trade?" And we're like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> but bro, like, he's I think he put out like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars that day for that stu- stupid ass shoes. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I wore them though. Yeah, I, I wore the fuck out of them. I ain't gonna lie. But, but yeah, yeah it was just a time. moment. I had the green one with the triangle because I thought like, oh, this is the most unique one. It has a fucking triangle on <laughs> <Bro>. it. <laughs> I swear to God, the white three ones were popping. Yeah, too. Oh, I remember yeah, white yeah. three quasas. The green, green were hard green. though bro, with the triangle. Yeah. Low key, they were. Bro. They were. Bro. Yeah, it's, just, it is. It is. Bro, I cooked. They just look like Roshi runs. Pirate now blacks. They do. Pirate, Pirate blacks, bro. I fucking shout out round two, bro. So. I bought Pirate Blacks for retail. I wore the fuck out of them. I took them to round two. I don't know what they were going for. This is when I was still not working there. Yeah. These fools offered me $900 for a used Pirate Black. And I was like, pet, take it. It's yours. I don't know Crazy. what they did with it. I, I remember I think I started for $1,100. I was just like, fuck, those shits were cooked. Like, I, I wore them to the gym. I ran in them. Spanked like, them. Like, they were spanked. But your definition of spank. No, no, these were actually spanked, spank, though. Like, I remember sometimes I would wear them with no socks. <laughs> <laughs> like, these were spanked, bro. Like, I remember I even looked at them and I was just like, I said, I'm going to get like 350, 400. Because they were still high. Yeah. These was looked at me straight in the eye. I think it was Russo. 900? Okay. Bet. <laughs> sure. Bro, I still remember wing 12s. Bro, that's crazy. Mm. I, I hit. Sold them to them. I hit on Nike yeah. and I I made I lined up to sell them because I wanted to be first to sell them because I already knew if you bring the shoe first to round two before anybody you yeah. get paid well. Yeah. I even would tell people in New York and I'm like yo first person to bring the shoe in is gonna get paid the best. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, so I remember I lined up I think it was like fifth six in line nobody had them and I was like bet lit. I think Sean offered me same thing nine hundred dollars and I was just like bet here you go. And you know the fucked up thing is he put them for nine fifty. Shout That's out to him. Fucking and crazy. they sold. But that was him just wanting the shoe and just making 50 bucks it. just for the Instagram. That's where I learned that from. Just get it, post it, see what happens. And sometimes he would do it just to crack the market. If they were going for 1200 he'd be like, I'm going to crack the market and bring the shoe down. Hmm. Which is kind of smart. Yeah. Jordan 12 going for $1,000. Crazy. But it's always the OVOs. So. Yeah. yeah. Bro, oh my <laughs> God. OVO 10s. OVO. Bro. Shout out Manny, bro. Shout out Manny, bro. <laughs> Manny, I don't know what he was doing, but he hit me up and he's just like, OBO 10s are dropping out undefeated today. Sample pairs. This There's no real pairs, nothing. Like, there was just like the Drake had them and that's it. I lined up and I think he was, I don't know what he was doing, but he couldn't go. So he hit me up and this I was unemployed. So I, like, I bet. So I went, lined up. I got two size 15s, a black and a white. I hit. I told Willie, yo, like, try to sell these for me because I don't fucking know who the fuck's going to buy a 15. And I really had, like, a pretty good relationship with Soul Stage at that moment at, at, in Alhambra. And he says, like, oh, they offered, like, thirty five fifty for both. And I was like, I'll drive there right now. Bro. I, I spent three under $400 or whatever it was, and I made 35 <sighs> just by driving a size 15 OVO 10, two of them, to fucking Alhambra from La Brea. Shout out Manny. Shout out Manny, bro. <laughs> he wasn't there. I just remember I hit him up when I got there. I'm like, yo, where you at? Because I was thinking there's the yeah. lines here. Like, did you go get something? And he's just like, oh, I can't make it. So I just told you. And I was like, bet. What the fuck? But yeah, that was... T- but again, imagine that store. They're fucking stuck with these fucking shoes that ended up coming out. Because that happened to us at round two, too. When they came out, we had a sample pair at the top. Uh, and we had a fucking price drop it to $300 because... Nobody was ever gonna. Touch nobody, no, nobody that. cared that it was a sample because they, they were the same shoe. Hmm. Yeah, that's fucking nuts. That bro. shit happens all the time, bro. Like you just with Jordan Brand, you never know. No one expects you to be first anymore. No, at all. No. It doesn't matter. It's better to be last and get it for a good deal than first and get co- cooked. Still got it. 
it's still that matters. But I mean, it happens. We talked about it before where like resellers that made a like giant living off selling early pairs, like they're telling us like, no, we got to shift to like ASICs now and to do this because, or wait till it comes out because it's hard. I even asked George what he was selling those new stashes for and sold them for pretty much nothing. But it's because, again, people be- know that when the stash comes out, it's going to be 150 mm-hmm. right. if that, 100, 100 bucks. bucks. Yeah. You know, like linens, I think it's a great shoe. 150 150 All day. Still? Yeah. yeah. You need a pair? I got a size 9 for you. We do. It'll fit. Hmm. Me. Yeah. Um, do you guys thrift? Uh, online thrift. Thrift? Or, like, have you ever found anything that you were like, oh, shit? Because that's another question because I, I like a lot of vintage. So people always ask me, what is your biggest find? And I was like, right, pay resale. <laughs> like, Same. for most. <laughs> My biggest find? I found, like, back then, I hit on maybe, like, 10 champion jerseys. Like, good, you know, summer. Like, good teams. Yeah, then- yeah. Kobe, uh, Charlotte. Yeah, good colorways. I still have them. But back when I was thrifting, like, I was all over the champion like jerseys, yeah. yeah. I, had, <laughs> I sold them here. I had thrifted a Jason Kidd Dallas jersey and a Sam Casella Rockets jersey. Oh, I remember. They're a champion. They were here yeah. forever, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, yeah. If you're selling them at Syndicate, it was when different. If you're selling up, them at round two, it, you know they yeah. probably move for like a hundred, bringing them in for like. Nah, 50, surprisingly, 40 bucks. we never like we never like charge that much for jerseys at round two. If I'm correct, like they were like forty, 40, 50, 40 to eighty, bucks. depending. Like literally from forty to eighty, depending the player, I guess on the, the Michael logo. Jordan yeah, or Michael Kobe. Jordan was one twenty-five, hundred percent. I still remember that. Any Bulls twenty-three, thirty-three. Because I would get them for 10, take them to round two, I guess maybe for like 25 a piece. But if I picked up 10, 15 yeah, on top, you make top, quick money. Whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. a couple hundred for a drive. Yeah, I remember, bro, we were literally talking about it with Rob on Saturday, how we have PTSD from vintage because, bro, the vintage we would fucking see <laughs> at round two. I remember Sean one time, <laughs> like, he gassed up uh, single stitch tees. Oh but, my like, God. people are still gas on. Yeah. But it's just like, not every single stitch tee is good. It's like, obviously, there is the bangers, but not every. And I remember kids would come in and be like, oh, but it's single stitch. And I'm like, bro, it's a blank shirt. <laughs> like, and it was just stuff like that where, like, they would, like, they just heard, like, yo, single stitch. And they would just buy anything that was single stitch. And I'm like, bro, the, it, it still has to be good. It has to be a good graphic, good fade. It has to, like, relate to something, you know? Like, yeah. for example, this weekend, they're nothing crazy, but I took in some Rose Bowl shirts. And I'm like, people were there. People are going to remember this. Let me put them for 20, 25 bucks. Somebody will buy it because they want to be in that moment. But I just remember, bro, digging through vintage at round two was insane. And the thing is that you had to do it because if Sean found out that you didn't look through it, you'd get cooked. Really? You, you, he would, he would, he, bro, I think maybe that's why we are the way we are because like Sean was like strict, like fucking strict, bro, especially with vintage. Like if you didn't take the time to talk to them about the tease and like how, mm. where, and how much, like you didn't ask all those questions, like, and they, and he would find out or overhear you just being like, no, we don't want it. You'd get cooked. And it wasn't even like it was like a little tote bag full of vintage. Bro, it, no, was it was like, like giant, green. like yes, Ike- oh. Ikea, the green polo bags, like shit like that. And it's like, no, bro. <laughs> There's a funny story, and I think he'll probably hate me repeating this one. It was with Rose Bowl Sunday. Uh, this guy brought in, fuck, tons of it. <laughs> And I think the bike came out to like 3,500. But I just looked through it, like looked through it, gave him the whole like round two, like spiel, like where'd you find, like everything that I just said that if he, I did the whole thing, bro. And I'm about, I go to Sean to sign the check because Sean had to obviously do the the thing. And he had just got back from Rose Bowl. And the check was for like 35, something like that. And he goes, what are you buying? Like, what, like, why is it so, like, this is a big check, like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, it's a ton of vintage, good stuff, too, like, polo, blah, 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 blah. No, dude, no, 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 I just got back from Rose Bowl, like, we're going to put out so much, like, we can't buy this. And I was just like, oh, my God, bro, now I have to go tell this guy that just thought he was going to leave with $3,500. <laughs> no. On everything? On everything. He said, pass on everything. <laughs> Dog. And I should you not, I was so mad at Sean this day that I just threw him under the bus. And he was ne- right next to me. So I get out and I'm like, hey, bro, like, actually, we're not going to be able to blah, blah, blah. And the guy, at, Sean walks right next to me and he's walking by. And if you remember, the back room yeah, was right there. So he's walking out. 
the guy's like, oh, why not? He said not to. And I straight up <laughs> pointed at him. <laughs> Bro, I was just like, I, I was so over it because I just gave him, I just gave this guy the spiel. I just dug through this shit. And I was just like, you know what? I'm so fucking pissed at this guy right now that I don't, I, at that point, I was like, I don't care if I lose my job. Like, and with Sean, you just, you, like, Sean was Sean, you know, you couldn't, like, make him look bad or anything that I was just like, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> and I pointed at him and he looked back. And he just kept walking. <laughs> and the guy the guy knew who Sean was, so he was just like, that's the boss. You know, if he says no, no like, no. But so it wasn't no back and forth. He understood, but I was just so mad that I just threw him under the bus, bro. I was just like, he did it. That's good. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad, bro. I was just like, oh, my God. Also, bro, $3,500, that means it was a lot of shit. Like, for vintage? At that point? Yeah, that's bro, a lot th- of shit. I was so... I, I used to hate working Sundays, Rose Bowl Sundays, because everybody's in town. Blah, blah, blah you're going to do... And to me, I'm a sneaker guy, so learning this... Like, I learned it, luckily, but, like, ha- going through the trials of learning, like, what's good vintage, what's bad vintage, it took me forever. Yeah. So when suck. I finally got it down, that I, I, like, I think I'm pretty good at it, that I was just like, bro, this man really just made me dub all this shit. <laughs> like, I was just pissed. And Loki, I used to get a shit ton of good vintage for really good prices because I didn't know. So I was like in the learning progress that sometimes Sean would be like, you paid what for this? And I'm like, bro, this much. And he'd be like, bro, this is three, four hundred dollars shirt. And I'll be like, pay for 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. No, not even. I just didn't know. I, in my head, I'm like, I'm going to put this out for 50. Fuck it. Fuck. But yeah, Crazy. but it just it's just with the times yeah. with vintage. If you go back, one of the most famous round two clips ever that I always see resurface is Sean buying a Nirvana heart shaped box, the one that I paid twenty five hundred dollars for. He bought it for one fifty off a guy. Fuck. And it's like the guy was hyped because he found it for sixty. So you just it's somewhere on YouTube. You'll find it if you look for it. But it was it was like I still think of that. I'm like, damn, like that was a good shirt. I wonder what he sold it for. If I'm correct, we sold it. At the vintage grand opening, I just don't remember the price. Damn. But I remember the, he held it for that moment. Uh, yeah. I used, to, I used to watch the show all the time, and I'd be like geeked to go to vintage, and then when I would go, there would be shit there. <laughs> 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 like, Same thing here. Like, yes. bro, oh my God, like, he found a hard ass stone coach. There's all types of shit. And I, I go, and I'm just like, <clears throat> What yeah. is this, bro? We're all watching the episodes the during the store? week, too. Fitted on Saturday I'm to go. I'm not going to lie to you. One of the biggest, to me, again, this is, I don't, I, I'm not going to tell nobody how to, like, run their business, but one of the biggest, I personally think, mistakes was opening a whole vintage store. Because back, round two, when it was just round two and not vintage, you and even vintage New York, rack. you had a vintage rack of all heat. There was only heat at that store because, obviously, we didn't have a whole store to mm. fill. So we were so picky with it that you would... You would go. You could go through old videos of when it was just inside round just two, and bro, just heat banger after banger after banger, and it was because we were so picky with it, and we only had one little section of it, so everything that you saw was heat. And all the real heat was hanging up, four hundred dollar tee. Yeah. All so, the and then I remember real. I would tell that to the guys at New York because I was kind of hands on with them, and I was just like, bro, it sucks because when we used to have it just in the store before the vintage store, it was just all heat, and then now you have. A five hundred dollar shirt with a twenty five dollar shirt, and now your customers coming in and being like, "So why is this five and this is twenty five? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, but people have to know. And I was like, "Bro, that's one thing that you guys don't get. Not everybody knows. Some people are just thinking, "Oh, it's a dirty shirt for five hundred dollars." Like mm-hmm. again, no disrespect, but that that's the common person Thing that doesn't vintage, know. Yeah. So when we had it at New York just by itself, we used to ha- bro, you go through the videos, bro. It was just insane pox, everything crazy for fair prices. And once they opened the, the vintage store, I feel like once you start mixing in, like, the crazy vintage with, like, your regular, regular vintage, end, like... It doesn't really... It, all that loses Not, not if it doesn't mix. It's just now you get your customer... Questioning. Questioning, is it worth 500 Is it really worth 500 You know? And again, for some of us, it is. But for some, like, your, your, average your everyday human being that's walking in there, they don't see that. So I think that was one of the biggest, like, where I was like, fuck, like, I wish we would just still stayed at the store. Because to me, bro, I would find shirts in there for really good prices. And as a consumer, and I'll be like, oh, I'm going to keep this. And Sean would be like, oh, I have to charge you full price. I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, it's fine. I liked how he first opened up the gallery, 
was cool with like hit all the movie stuff. The higher end. But stuff. then when he did like the store, like the vintage store. I want when, everybody that's watching this to go look at the gallery grand opening and link it. It was shit in insane, there. bro. Insane. It was crazy shit in there. Sean had hundreds, hundreds of 94s, 85s, 2001s, $300, 250 Fuck. Insane, now, like insane all prices. Shit that was in the gallery and at that nice. point, it was just that we we thought we were taxing. <clears throat> I still remember the craziest one was I, I talked about it in the show. Two thousand uh, nineteen eighty five Royal Ones, purple lace, beautiful, pristine. And I was like, that's a four thousand dollars shoe. I was just I would see it at the top of the gallery every time I would walk in because we would all take our breaks in the gallery. And I would always just look at it and I'm like, I can't afford that. Hmm. Whatever. I should have asked. This is why you fucking ask. Uh, I see Travis Scott walking out with them in his hand. <laughs> and I'm like, sick. And I was like, he paid a lot. We made a lot of money today. And I'm like, oh, what were those price tags? He's like, oh, they were eight. I gave them to him for seven. And I was just like, they were $800? <laughs> I was so mad because I didn't think I could get that shoe. And I was like, bro, if I would have just asked, he, and he probably would have told me a rack. Because a lot of the stuff there didn't have pricing. It was just whatever Sean thought, thought it was it worth. Was hmm. I think I also got confusing, too. Like, if you're thinking of just an average person on YouTube, you pull up, and then there's, like, four or three round two, it's, like... Yeah, you know, no. And then, mind you, they don't know vintage, so you go into one, and it's, like... The biggest, funniest thing was when I would go visit the vintage employees, and I'm, like, bro, I just sent 100 people to your store, and I'm, like, why? And they're all mad because they're all coming in with shoes, and they're, like, yo, y'all buy shoes? <laughs> But again, your average consumer didn't the, know yeah. that that wasn't the, the store, that that was just the vintage store. So it was a lot of like back and forth. And then sometimes as a consumer, you're, uh, me, I would be frustrated. Man, fuck this. I'm going home. You know, like <laughs> this ain't the store. Because parking is shit down, yeah. well, shit down there anyways. Yeah. So I get it. But yeah, vintage thrifts, bro. I, I just remember going through it. I don't thrift. I can't. I don't got the patience for it, bro. I like to look through everything. It's a lot of work. <laughs> me and... Me and Matt yeah. used to go to Torgum yeah. in Maywood. Yeah. And now I noticed that they're a whole thing now. They're like a yeah, whole a like space. flea, yeah. like flea market, mm. everything. Yeah. Before you had to like have an account to go in there. And I don't know how the fuck Matt will get in. So I'd just be like, I'll go with you. And you would find good stuff like champion jerseys for ten bucks like and polo, stuff like yeah. that. At the time. Polo, like a good band tee for like it, and I think it was by weight. So you would do your shit by weight. And Ooh. yeah. Mm. But this was when before um, before they started doing that, and now if you follow them on, like, just go look up Torgum, they're a whole like thing. Like, yeah, they, they probably got smart. They're like, yo, like people are willing to pay the premium for this, so up, they yeah. put it up. We're just gonna do it like this. Nah, yeah, I don't know. Shout out to people that do it though, because I feel like you gotta have a lot of patience to look through everything. It pays off though if you find some good shit, but to have to actually like dig through it bro like i don't even like shopping outside of like the shop now because i don't like looking through stuff i still do it i yeah. online if i'm looking for something oh yeah no online is easy yeah online's online easy but like going through a store like with racks that you can barely move to me like i don't got the patience I'm for still that like, now <laughs> i ran yeah. for that oasis shirt oh yeah but yeah that was, bro, that was he crazy. was sick bro <laughs> that long sleeve oasis shirt yeah. that memorial posted um so i sweaty. he posted it and i hit him up on the way please yeah. hold like I'm running there. Like, I literally got off the shower and I booked it. Whatever. So I buy the shirt for $800. He said that Justin Reed offered him $1,500 for it. And then he said later on, he hit me. He was like, yo, somebody just offered me two bands for it. I know he was sick. <laughs> I know he was sick, but I know also that he was just like, you're not going to sell it. And yeah. if you do sell it, you're going to sell it back to me. Like, he knows that. Like, that's like kind of like the relationship we have. Because even cool. like, I still I still feel like I got got for my Bjork. I had this crazy Bjork tea. That was the one he posted? The, the one day? that he posted. Yeah. And I was like, yo, what you post that for? Three bands. And I was like... How much did you sell it? He I, traded it. I traded it. And yeah. I think I I think I got like a $500 shirt back. Fuck. But I just was really, really horny for that yeah. shirt. Yeah. That I was like, I'll give you this for that. But like, what... With Vintage, like, what determines... Like it's demand it's awesome. and then right now with yeah. oasis they just announced their tour so everybody's waxing for anything oasis mm. but what makes that be your rare demand? that one is super rare i have another one that's black and white um i think i paid like 700 for it but alex said it's like a two thousand dollar shirt that bjork too the homie blessed me shout out that guy he blessed it to me for four hundred dollars 
Because he's like, oh, I know this is going to you, and I know that you're going to wear it. I'll, get, I'll give it to you for 500 But yeah, is nuts. last question of the day. Somebody asked, um, with Fashion Week just um, finishing, oh, it just finished like a yeah. week ago, who is somebody in the fashion world that you would love to meet and maybe like just get to know? Mark Jacobs. They so look like they're cool as hell. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> he's kind of scary, yeah. low key. Yeah, he just looks cool. He's cool, cool. Yeah, like a cool yeah, person. He's, yeah. he's always out and about. Yeah, like he just seems super chill. Yeah. Or Rick, even. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think either of those two, they look like they'd be interesting. They just look like characters, like mythical creatures, like, bro. Like, they just look cool, you know what I mean? You yeah. like? Mine's pretty easy. Kanye. Kanye? <laughs> yeah. Why? I would think of him as an artist, but that's why. Um, like, well, that's I feel like. Yeah, I don't want to hang out with him. Pick his brain a bit, like. Do Nas? <laughs> Do some Nas with Kanye. That is, yeah, yes, bro. He he's spends addicted. fifty thousand dollars a month on Nas. He's gonna text along, like bring the Nas, bro. You yes. haven't seen it? I'm gonna send it bro. to you. We'll there's, a, it. there's a picture of him doing Nas, put, and he's like Ryan Garcia. I'm off the Nas. You I haven't post, seen that? The little uh, the mask. <laughs> bro. I'm gonna send it to you. Are you I put it. it. That's, Oh yeah, I'm gonna send it to oh, you. Yeah, that shit bro. is hilarious. It's funny because the person he mentions is Ryan Garcia. Out of everybody, so out of everybody Garcia, in the world, the he, he was like, Ryan Garcia, I'm off the Nas right now. <laughs> like, just I just want to see like what makes him like. Where did you get to like? How do you shift your direction so much? Like, how do you go from being like the Louis Vuitton Don to, you know, keeping everything just simple, starting bro. easy, and then doing the whole all black Balenciaga thing, and then now. Looking like Slender Man, like what? You seen that? Um, there was a funny ass tweet. You know how he did his crazy show in Korea where yeah. he looked like old mm-hmm. Yay, mm-hmm. yeah. and somebody tweeted, "He's still in there like Anakin." No. <laughs> and I was just like, bro, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know, like Anakin hey, yo. was still there. <laughs> I was, just, I started laughing because that performance it looked that like like peak Yay, like it looked like it was the, still. Yeah. Last time was when last time that was when he did the shit with Drake. Yeah, that was good yeah. too. Uh, bro, I wish I would have went to that shit so... Me too. Looking back yeah. now, yeah. You know what I did? I fucking went to New York and I got COVID really bad. <sighs> Instead of going to that. He's going on a world tour, though. So he is? Let's go. Oh, God. We'll They're saying he's doing but, a world but tour. But we'll see what happens, because we'll it could be Ye that's just going to press a button and walk off stage. Yeah, you we'll know? see. He did another show in um. He did a show in China. Yeah, he's been doing them all overseas. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. He's going to give us the whole, the whole script. Bro. Hopefully. How about you, Reggie? Uh, I... Virgil, probably. I feel like me or probably other people too. Like I didn't appreciate what he was more than just off wide or fashion. Like he seemed interesting. Like going back and like watching interviews and stuff. I wasn't onto that at the time. I was like, I was a fucking kid, you know. So yeah, Virgil for sure. If I could go back in time. One thing for us, I feel like with Virgil is like we literally saw it from the start to like obviously till he passed away. Um, like we were fucking giant fans of him. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Giant fans like from Pyrex. From, we would just thought like, oh, this guy hangs out with Kanye. It's like from the jump. Yeah, jump. from the jump. I remember when he did Off White. We fucking bought pretty much everything that came out with that first collection. Um, yeah, I think like for us, Virgil was big. But to me, I mean, I've met him. Um, it'd probably be Kim Jones. Um, nice guy, super creative. I feel like his LV was really nice. What he was doing when he was there. What he did with Dior is okay, in my opinion. Just me being honest. Um, the sneakers were great. But I think I would like like to hang out with Kim Jones. Or Kate Moss. Kate Moss. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kate Moss. But yeah, I think that's a great way to end it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Like, we'll comment, see you guys subscribe. next week. Appreciate and y'all. Let us know if you guys have any questions for any of us. Hit us. Down here. Peace. Don't be shy. Peace out. Laters. Perfect.